A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. My heart is filled with great joy and great hope in the experience of this week. And it is rooted, first of all, in Jesus Christ, in he who is Lord, whom you have all encountered. And as the first reading reminds us, as St. John writes, that it is precisely Jesus Christ, who is the testimony. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. God gave us eternal life with this life in his Son. And there are three points which I wish to make this morning as we go forth. The first is that on testimony. St. John says, if we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. And my sisters and brothers, it is essential for us to reflect upon, do I truly trust the testimony of Jesus Christ in the gospel? Many promises have been given to us, both in the Old Testament and in the Gospels by Jesus. And do I listen to those promises, to that testimony? Your sins are forgiven. I go to prepare a place for you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I go to prepare a place for you. All of these are words spoken by Jesus. And then the seven powerful words from the cross. And too often, we are ready to listen to the voice of the world. Like Adam and Eve, we're ready to listen to the voice of the devil, who says, this can't be possible. This cannot be true. And we forget the words 
of the angel to Mary when she asks, how can this be possible? For God, nothing is impossible. And my sisters and brothers, we must be convinced within our hearts of the truth of that. of opening our hearts to the Lord and believing and putting our faith in him and not the cacophony of voices around us. Remember the words of Elizabeth to Mary. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And do we believe in that word, in that testimony of the only Son of God? Secondly, we hear in the gospel of the baptism of Jesus. A voice came from the heavens. You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. And that brings me to the second point. And that is identity and intimacy. Identity of who we become when we are baptized and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, when we become a new creation. And all of that is the work of the Spirit and the Spirit of truth. St. Paul speaks of it, St. John speaks of it, that we become the adopted children of God. On the day of your baptism, the Father spoke those words over you. You are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. And the Father delights in us. Any of you who are fathers know the joy that is in your hearts when you watch your child being born and holding that child in your arms. Your hearts are filled with wonder and there is immediate love for that child. And the Father has loved each and every one of you from all eternity. Every human being has been in the heart and mind of the Father. And it is precisely into intimacy with the Trinity, with the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit into which we are called, into which we are invited. And just as we cannot force people to love us, God cannot force us to love him. We must desire that intimacy We must desire to be in relation with him. Our hearts must be receptive to him. And truly, it is precisely in entering into that relationship and receiving his love and being convinced in our heart of hearts of that love 
that we will be healed, that we will be forgiven, that we will be provided with the graces that we need. He has promised to be with us always, even in the midst of trials, sufferings, and yes, persecutions. And in that intimacy, we can speak with confidence and trust in the Lord. And it means surrendering ourselves completely to him. And we can see the type of intimacy that Jesus wants to have with us in his own words. When he speaks, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Or when he reminds us and desires for us to love him as he has loved us, that the one who loves him, he tells us, the Father and I will come and make our home in him. Do we believe that testimony? That I can become the very home of the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit? It is truly wondrous when you meditate upon it that our God loves us so much that if we say yes to becoming his home, it will be done. And in that, it helps us to grow in holiness. We too, like Jesus, must be those who seek only the will of the Father. Not my will, not the will of the government, not the will of those around me, but the will of the Father. And my daughters and sons, we pray that every time we pray the Our Father. Thy will be done. Do I let those words just roll off my tongue when I pray the Our Father, or do I really mean them? Not my will, but your will, Father. And is my very food to do the will of the Father? And it is precisely in the Eucharist that we celebrate now that that intimacy is a reality. And praying for a greater love of the Eucharist, Jesus has left us this incredible gift. And he's clear in John 6. And yes, it is a difficult teaching as he recognizes, but when you put your faith and trust in his words, it is true. He is here with us. And he is present as we receive his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And that is the intimacy that he desires for us, not just once a year, not just twice a year, but he allows us that intimacy every day, every time we go to Mass. And do we open our hearts and speak heart to heart with him? Finally, 
the third point, that as we listen to the testimony and put our faith in the testimony, as we believe in our true identity and have intimacy with the Lord, in our complete surrender to him, then do we become missionary disciples? Do we go out into the world and proclaim Jesus Christ, no matter what the cost? And no matter how people may reject us or ridicule us, and you, my brothers and sisters, can give testimony to Jesus Christ by inviting others as you witness to Christ and what he has done in your life and opening the door for another person to encounter Jesus. And in that, it is important, first of all, to propose Jesus to others by the way of life that you live. Yesterday afternoon at a reception, I was talking with one of the persons who was serving there. And he shared with me, I am so filled with hope as I see these young people He had hit rock bottom in his addictions six years ago, and he has been clean for six years. He's returned to Jesus Christ, and he's sharing all of this openly with me. But he said, when I see these young people and their love for Jesus, it helps me grow in my love for Jesus. And none of you would know, know that unless he expressed it. And we never know how we are impacting people's lives just by asking their name if they are a homeless person by giving them a bottle of water or a pair of socks that all of us can carry in our cars, and of caring for others and giving witness to Jesus. And it is in those little ways that the hearts of people are changed that they come to know the Lord. And your witness is needed greatly today. The world is a mess, the church is a mess, and it is because we have left our God. And when you look at salvation history, when you look at history post-resurrection, any time people leave God, there is chaos. And we see that chaos today. And the only answers is Jesus Christ and he alone. And people are baffled. I know I have had people say to me, why are you so filled with joy? You always seem peaceful even in the midst of difficulty. And it's because of the joy and peace that Jesus gives that no one can take from me.
One time going into the cathedral, one of the police officers said to me, there have been threats against you. And I looked at him and I said, that's okay. If I die on the altar, I die on the altar. And it'll be okay. Because I know Jesus will be there. And he just kind of looked at me, baffled. But in that, it gave witness as he kind of scratched his head and thought, what is this? And people will yell at you, people will jeer at you, especially if you're pro-life today. I was reading a book this week of a man who discovered Jesus Christ in a very liberal, secular place. And he started telling his friends who were all very liberal. And one good friend of his, the first words out of her mouth was, well, that's good for you, but you didn't become pro-life, did you? And of course, he had. But it is only in giving witness to Christ that others will come to know Christ and to believe in him. And it depends on every one of you here, from the oldest to the youngest, to be those who witness on your college campuses, in the airports, wherever you are pointing to Jesus, just as St. John the Baptist would point to Jesus as the Lamb of God. And so, as we go forth today, I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, my sons and daughters, search within your own hearts. Pray for a deeper, trust and confidence in the testimony of God. Pray for the grace to know the Father as your Father. He is more your Father than your natural Father. And he loves you unconditionally. Receive that love. Pray that you may receive your dignity as a beloved son, a beloved daughter of the Father. And know that that intimacy is a lifelong journey. It isn't instantaneous, but that intimacy continues to grow the more you surrender to the Lord, the more you give yourself to the Lord. And as your confidence in the testimony we have received and your intimacy grows, you will be missionary disciples, not just for four years, but for your entire life. Giving witness to Jesus, no matter what the cost. He has given to each one of you the command, go forth and make disciples. And he has said, know that I am with you always. And in every moment, he is with you. And most especially in the Eucharist. Open your hearts to that truth 
and pray that the spirit of truth will purify your heart so that you may grow in deeper love for the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and for every person you encounter. God bless you.